with you, man of God. I greet you well. Amen. It's so nice to 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 be here again at this altar, and I thank you so much for the invitation. Let me greet Pastor Charles. Amen. Greetings, woman of God. I greet you well. I see Howard. Amen. Oh, <laughs> listen, you know, my family and Howard family, the connection deep. Amen. Bless you, man of God. Amen. It's so nice to see all God's wonderful people. Sister Constance, bless you. Lovely to see you again. Amen. My 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 heart is is warm. Amen. And fuzzy right now to see the wonderful people of God standing with the man of God. Amen in the elevation room hallelujah and i greet all the saints on the line tonight amen and just know that you are a part of the beloved you are a child of the most high god and don't ever lose sight of that amen he calls us his own. That's something very dear to me that the God of creation, the God of the universe calls me son. Amen. And through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, he has taken me into his family. Amen. And he has connected me to the inheritance of Jesus Christ. Yes, I can say this freely who is my king, my Lord, my God, and yes, my big brother by eternity. <laughs> Amen. So greetings, one and all. Tonight, we're talking about restoring the weapon of worship in my life. Amen. And what a, what a, what a theme the man of God gave me. Amen. And what a theme from the heavenly realm. Amen. And listen to me. I want you to understand that you are his worship. I want to say that again. You are his worship. Hallelujah. Let me just reiterate that point. You are his worship. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want us to look tonight um, at some lessons from King Jehoshaphat. Amen. So we'll be looking at <clears throat> Second Chron Chronicles 20, um, 20 through to 28. That's where we'll anchor this message from tonight as the main text. But in context, I want to broadly look at the life and the actions of this man of God, King Jehoshaphat. Amen. One of the kings of the <clears throat> southern kingdom of Judah. Yes. And there are some lessons to be learned from this man of God as it relates to restoring the weapon of worship. Amen. The Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat got some news one day in 2 Chronicles 20, and this news caused him to shake. He was frightened by what he heard. And the Bible said that his reflex action was to throw himself, he, 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 he threw himself at the feet of the Lord and he sought God for his divine intervention. What he heard, he realized that in his own strength, he couldn't deal with it. What he heard caused him not to panic, even though he was frightened, but to run to God and seek God 
and not only him, he called the nation together. He called the nation together and they sought the Lord. And we know how the story ends. The Bible tells us that after uh, one of the sons of Asaph, a, Asaph, a worshiper, got up and prophesied, amen. Uh, his name is ja Jehe. Let me see if I can pronounce it right here. Amen. Jehaziel. Yes, one of the sons of Asaph, one of the worshippers, got up and prophesied the impending deliverance. And the Bible tells us that as they went out, as per God's instruction, the king, Jehoshaphat, ordered Israel, amen, to worship and praise God as they went forth into battle. But the instruction was dress for battle, but don't fight anymore. <laughs> I want to tell somebody tonight, stand still, amen, but be dressed for battle. This one, God has got it. This one, God has got it. I heard Brother Howard play one of those songs that really lift, lifted our spirits just now. And the, 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 the singer was saying, war is in the heavenlies. Amen. Our worship is instigating some wars in the heavenlies. And I heard Howard say this, that we have won. We are victorious. Amen. We were victorious. Mighty God. And I just want you to just posture yourself mentally like that. The Bible tells us that prior to chapter 20, Jeho Jehoshaphat, after being rebuked by God through the prophet Jehu, undertook a nationwide initiative to cleanse the land of idolatry and firmly establish the worship of Jehovah, the one true God. In chapter 19, we see him appointing judges and elders throughout the land to teach the people the ways of the Lord. In all the cities of Judah, their instruction was to carry out judgment, to teach the people, instruct them in the laws, the precepts, and the statutes of Almighty God. These judges were selected from the elders of Israel, the priests and the Levites. Amen. And he would send them out into the fortified cities of Judah. In chapter 20, we see a move by Israel's brother, Edom, along with one of their cousin, Ammon, along with some other families, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the people from Mount uh, Seir, they were confederate to come and expel God's people out of their promise, out of their land. And King Jehoshaphat, as I said, he resorted to prayer. And while praying and seeking the Lord, Jehaziel got up and prophesied that God would deliver Israel and Israel wouldn't have to fight. God is about to deliver you. And listen to me, you don't have to fight. You just have to get into the, my God Almighty, I wish somebody understood that you just, had, you just have to release your worship right now. You may be going through, you may be under some weight, you may be struggling, but you just need to release your worship. From scripture, we understand that worship 
is not just the expressions we see on Sunday morning, neither it is those expressions we see when we gather as believers, yes, to praise Jesus Christ our Lord. Worship for us as believers, uh, it's a lifestyle. It's how we live. I want to tell you that one of the greatest, oh my God Almighty, one of the, one of the greatest transformation that took place on Calvary's cross when Jesus Christ our Lord said it was finished was that God abolished the whole system. And the new system that was about to be revealed, Paul said in, in Corinthians that it was, it was more glorious. If the, if, the, if the system that and the laws that, 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 were, that were unto death, amen, by their rigors was introduced with glory, how much more grace and liberty and freedom in Jesus Christ. And watch this. The Bible tells us that God changed the situation drastically. No longer would God come down into a tabernacle made of wood and stone. No longer would God come down in a tent somewhere in the desert. Amen. To meet them at the evening sacrifice. God, my God Almighty, initiated the sacrifice that would come from us. The sacrifice that would be living. The sacrifice that would be constant, the sacrifice, my God Almighty, that would come from lively temples. Watch me. We now are his worship. We are the tabernacle. We are the sacrifice. And we are the priests administering the worship. God has condensed it has brought it down, amen, to a level of efficiency that we have never seen before. No longer do I need to walk 10 miles. No longer do I need to travel overseas. Right where I am, I just need Marco Shekendeleba to stir myself in the Holy Ghost to offer up the evening sacrifice, to offer up the morning sacrifice, to offer up the midday sacrifice. You see, I am a walking church. I'm a living, breathing church. You need to get rid of the concept from your mind that the church is the building that you go to. We are here in church right now and we are not in any edifice, grandiose stadium. We are on a platform. Amen. And I heard the man of God say we are at the altar that has been erected in cyberspace. And each one of us has come as a lively stone. And hear me and hear me well. Every time you look in the mirror, you are looking at the temple of God. You are looking at the place where worship to God is constant. You're looking at Monday Kasato. The place where the Holy Spirit dwells. Intercession is non-stop. You think the fire on the altar has gone out? No. Paul said it was shadow of things to come. The fire on the altar is the Holy Ghost sitting and resting upon you. You are a living, breathing, <clears throat> walking house of prayer and worship. Never forget that. Never forget that. <clears throat> and even though some may think we need to gather and have band and have instruments galore, 
and have ten sopranos, ten altars, and ten tenors. <clears throat> Even though some may think we need a large crowd and a crescendo of voices going up, even though some may think that we need a performance and somebody performing on the stage to actualize worship, to realize worship. Well, let me tell you, friends, you are wrong. Right where you are sitting right now, you are God's worship. You are his praise and glory. Every time somebody looks at you, every time somebody sees you and remember what and who you were, you are his worship. <clears throat> Your life now has become a testimony to his power and his goodness. And let me tell you something, living daily as a living sacrifice to our heavenly father, must be priority number one through the living, through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We are made to be living temples, walking houses of prayer. We are habitations for God most high. Worship, therefore, is who we are now and everything we do. Worship is who we are now and everything we do. <laughs> Watch me, dear friends. <laughs> From the life of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat <clears throat> we can learn some things about restoring the weapon of worship. For some believers, worship is not who they are, and it doesn't encompass everything they do. And if you are in that position tonight, fear not. There is a word from God to get you back to that place. For one reason or another, this has been diminished in you. This has been tempered in you. The cares of life, the struggles that you face, those struggles sometimes are within your own self. You don't think you are good enough. <clears throat> those struggles that are from your past, your, your ancestral lineage, the altars in your family line that are calling out for you and calling to you to keep you in bondage. Tonight, by the Holy Ghost, brethren, we are going to restore the weapon of worship. And let me tell you something that worship as a weapon <coughs> is a very dynamic piece of the Christian armament. Worship can simultaneously be a defensive and offensive weapon one time. One time. Watch me. Worship by your holy living, by your daily sacrifice unto Almighty God, forms a defensive barrier around you. <clears throat> You're coming in alignment and agreement with the Holy Spirit to walk in holiness, to live righteous before Almighty God forms a barrier around you. We see this with Job. The Bible said that the devil told God, you have edged him in and fenced him round. I cannot touch him. And only when God allowed it, the devil was allowed to go even near to Job. And even then, he was restricted in his operation 
the restriction was do what you will, but do not touch his life. I want to tell you something that the Bible said that God recognized Job's worship, how he lived, how he conduct. He said, have you noticed that there is none like him? A righteous man who hates evil. And worship can be an offensive weapon <clears throat> that when the heart is right, the spirit is right, the soul is right, and you open your mouth and release your alabaster wherever you are, it can change the atmosphere, cause demons to be terrified. It penetrates the first, second, and third heaven and move every so sort of satanic embargo. It bursts through the clouds and any demonic iron clad that is set up over the atmosphere, the stratosphere, and all the spheres that goes right up to the third heaven. Worship is dynamic and powerful to break any barrier. It is like a battering ram a spiritual battering ram that when released from your mouth, from a heart and altar that is righteous and holy, it penetrates upward. Nothing is able to stop it. No wonder the man of God don't sing, or you can say, first it was fragrance, then it turns to fire. <clears throat> that fire penetrates, my friend, and burns up all that stands in its way. Watch me. In, if we are going to restore this weapon of worship, there are some things we have to do. Number one, we have to cleanse our lives, our surroundings from all idols and their associated altars. Some of us have some altars speaking over us. Some of us have some altars calling unto us. Well, we need to arise in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And see God bring repentance, seek deliverance, and wage war against these things. They are they are contaminating your oil. They are contaminating your flow. And if they are not removed, mighty God, they will manifest. They will manifest and wreak havoc. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 19 and verse 3 that when the prophet came, to the man of God. <laughs> the man of God didn't frown. He heard the prophet. The Bible said that the prophet Jehu said to the said to, to, to Jehoshaphat, there is still good things in you. And you have destroyed the Asherim out of the land. You have cleansed the land. And have set your heart to seek God. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat moved throughout Judah and removed the evil altars. <clears throat> they were contaminating the land. They were an obstacle to true worship. They were causing breach in the defenses. And for the children of Judah at that time, it wasn't spiritual only, but physical. Armies attack. Armies killed and maim and lame some because the worship of Jehovah was not flowing as it should. The people allowed themselves to be contaminated. Don't allow yourself to be contaminated. You must be in the world, but not of the world. You live in the world, but you are not a part of the world. 
you are called to be a living sacrifice. Cleanse, cleanse, cleanse yourselves. Remove the idols. Mandaba shekereba. Get rid of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And allow the Holy Spirit to occupy every room in your temple. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Most High God? And this is why deliverance is so important because you need that mantle, that anointing to cleanse the land, to remove from the house of God those pollutants that seek to contaminate true worship. Number two, one must seek to build and maintain a personal framework that fosters and promotes the worship of Almighty God. This includes reading and studying God's word, applying it to your life, daily spending personal quality time in God's presence, worshiping him and praising him and offering up prayers of various sorts, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of warfare, Come on, saints, don't diminish the time you need to spend with God. You know what I start to do, saints? I start to put my, I, I am working my phone. I'm not letting my phone work in me. I'm not letting the phone work me. I'm working the phone. I put on the timer and say, listen to me. I want to want me to spend in a prayer. Prophet Bernard, tell me. yes, when me I, me I work with the timer, me force myself to pray. My God Almighty, this ain't no rush thing, Sister Constant. This ain't no rush thing, Pastor Charles. Hey, I'm, I'm, I am determined to spend some time with you here, Jesus. And sometimes I take a break and I say, all right, you talk now, Lord. And I'm listening. And I determine that I'm not stopped. Oh, God Almighty, I'm not stopping until that time I run out. And the time set, I made an appointment with God. And just so you think that the phone is active and I'm getting called, now I put it on aeroplane mode. And when Sister Shanna called me, she have to call the kids and, and the kids tell her daddy in the room, lock up. We have to build that framework, brethren, that fosters worship. Some of us want to come and run and make up some noise, but it ain't a joyful noise. Who have spirit mando basata? Who have spiritual discernment and in tune with the Holy Ghost can hear the contaminants in your noise, knowing that your noise ain't a joyful noise. The noise got to have some living behind it. The, go the noise got to have some oil behind it and you only get the oil in his presence a part of this framework brethren amen should be adhering to the true prophetic voice and listen to me not because bernard is my mentor and friend i'm saying this i'm saying this of a truth bernard you are true prophet of god Folks, you know, a true man of God in our midst. And hearing to the prophetic voice, some people want to dismiss the prophetic voice. Some want to ignore the prophetic voice. But the prophetic voice <coughs> is a critical component in worshiping the one true living God. Because God sends his prophet in every dispensation to always warn, to always bring correction and rebuke when persons seem to be going off track as it relates to worship. God's prophet 
are always a key component in calling individuals, communities, and nations back to God. The true prophetic voices are out there now calling the church back from apostasy, calling the church out of laziness and slumber and compromise. <clears throat> These things which have contaminated her true worship. God's prophetic voices are calling people to repentance. Not just, my God, can I speak some Jamaican language here? Not just cobaling. Not just cobaling. God's true per mashakota. God's true prophetic voices are calling people to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your evil ways. Turn from compromising. Turn from polluting. Turn, my God Almighty, from mixing. Turn from everything that is taking God's people away from true worship, from truly putting down our lives as living sacrifices. <laughs> the true prophetic voices are saying, hey, come back to the place of worship to Almighty God. Warn the saints when they are moving away from God, Second Chronicles 19.2, the Bible said that Jehu came unto Jehoshaphat and rebuked him because of his alliance with Ahab. Because of his alliance with a man, a king, that had no regard for God. The true prophetic voice is calling the church back from every alliance with people and institution and places and things that have no regard or respect for God. Some of, some of us pastors have them up in our pulpit, grandstanding them and boasting about or connections. I don't know how true it is. I didn't follow it up. But one of my girls told me one time, or somebody, you know, one of my girls or somebody told me that Nicki Minaj and Tasha Cobbs did one, did a song together and thing and thing. I, I don't know. Okay, so I, I don't have any proof. If it is so, type amen, let me know. If it's not so, I stand corrected. And I said to the person, what dealing does Tasha Cobbs have with Nicki Minaj? Okay, so it is true. What dealing does this worship leader who is called to worship Almighty God have with person who involved in all kind of mysticism? I said, my God, what is going on in the body of Christ. Well, don't think Prophet Bernard and others in the prophetic calling are keeping quiet. No, we're not keeping them out shut. We're going to call them out. True worshippers don't need to connect with idolic Makosh and Dalabosa. I rebuke every connection tonight with idolatry on this line in the name of Jesus. Cut it off! Rashende leba sako taraba. In Jesus' mighty name. The man of God said, listen to me. What are you doing, Jehoshaphat? Why? Man, they shut up. God is angry with you. I want to tell us tonight that God is not pleased when we seek to connect with darkness. And we are light. Oh, glory to God. So we have to listen to the prophetic voices. Adhere to the prophetic voices. 
The Bible said that in this chapter, Jehoshaphat said, believe the Lord and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. <laughs> the man was aligned to somebody who abused, killed God's prophets. When he a chapter or two before this, the Bible tells us that he went down to visit his friend and colleague and family by marriage because he allowed his son to marry to Jezebel and Ahab's daughter, Atalia. And the Bible said that he allowed Ahab to convince him to go to war against a king, mind you, a Syrian king. <laughs> that God prophetically put in place. And the Bible tells us that he almost got killed. When you align, Marco said the true worshipers, when you align yourself with idolaters, watch out, you may be killed spiritually. And if God don't step in, the devil will take you out physically. Don't get contaminated. Keep your garments spotless. The Bible tells us though that Jehoshaphat respected and honored the prophetic voice. Unlike his father, the Bible tells us that when the, 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 the father of Jehu, this prophet, Hanani, rebuked Asa, Asa threw him in prison. Didn't want to hear what the man of God was saying. The man of God was calling him back because Asa took the instruments of worship, took the articles of worship and gave it to a heathen king, an idolater, the holy vessels. You see, man and, man and woman, and men and women of God and this, around this wonderful uh, altar, if you are not careful, you will take Mando Shaka, what belongs to God, and give it to idolaters. The Bible said that he made a league with idolaters to get rid of his enemy. And hear the rebuke from the prophet. The prophet says, God delivered you from an, a, a force greater than this one. And you, did you remember that? That you had to take what belongs to God. I hear my big brother and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaking. He said, render to Caesar what is Caesar. But make sure you give to God what is God. Worship is only for God and nobody else. The Bible said, that he took, he emptied out God's house, emptied out the palace, gave it to a heathen king to get a relief from the enemy. And here the man of God, the man of God, Hannah and I said, listen to me, this guy, God had ordained that you would have been victor over him, but because you're allying yourself, <laughs> because you gave away the instruments of worship, the treasures of God's house, this king will be over you. And Asa was wrath and threw Hanani in prison. Watch how you treat the prophetic voice when they are calling you back to true worship. Humble yourself. Find the altar of repentance and cry out to God. Don't get puffed up. Don't let pride take root. The prophetic voice is there to bring correction. And here we see Jehoshaphat responded. And instead of putting Jehu in prison, he initiated a nationwide reform 
to ensure that worship to God stays intact. We must ensure that our lives constantly offer up sacrifices that are well-pleasing to God. Number three, at the heart of the matter of worship is a matter of the heart. At the heart of the matter of worship is a matter of the heart. We can say the right things, do the right things, rock the right rock, dip the right dip, dance the right dance, but the heart is totally disengaged with the Father. Listen, brethren, one's heart must be perfected in its resolve to seek God and desire him and him only. David said in Psalms 27 <laughs> and verse 8, When you said to me, I think it's verse 7, sorry. When you, when you said to me, seek your face. My heart, verse 8, yes, it is, not verse 7. When you said to me, Father, seek my face, my heart responded, O oh Lord. Thy face will I see. The prophet said to Jehoshaphat, God has found that your heart is perfect towards him. Here is some good in you, Jehoshaphat, he said, because you have set your heart to seek the Lord. At the heart of the matter of worship must be a heart that is totally sold out for God. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. So that his blessed face can be seen. And I dare to add to the songwriter's words, can be seen clearly and not obscured by anything. We have to have a heart set to pursue God if we are going to restore Rashek and Deleba. You see, prophets, sometimes we as leaders, we, we, we don't give the people the right insight because we make them see when we are move in a certain way and the glory that comes with it but they don't see the heart they don't see the secret place and they don't see the time spent pursuing God beating down the flesh wrestling with the cares of life to ensure that our heart stays in the right place Listen to me, friends. Second Chronicles chapter 20 only occurred because from 16 to 19, Jehoshaphat was determined to live holy and pursue God. You can only win the weapon of worship when your heart is in the right place. Anything else? will cause casualty. You don't believe me? Ask the sons of Sceva. Ask many who tried to perform it and fake it till they make it and they could shake it. <laughs> it don't work, my friend. Watch that. Watch that. The heart, above all things, is easily swayed and persuaded and 
carried away. We have to ensure that our heart is grounded in the Lord. Anchored in Christ Jesus, our Savior. How is your heart with the Savior today? How is your heart with your Lord today? Do you find your heart drifting? Do you find your heart, your love, waning? Do you sense that you are not passionate in your pursuit anymore? Don't try to wield the weapon of worship now. Stop, repent, turn. Find your way back to the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is clear then, friends, that when true worship to Almighty God is constant and consistent as part of our functions as living temples, it becomes a great weapon when activated in its expression. Because worship is a deep well. It is not a skin deep affair. It's a deep well that underneath, at the bottom, has a lot of things going on in private. Listen to me. Jesus said, when you pray, go to the Father in secret. And the Father who sees in secret will do the open reward. It's a situation and a scenario like this Jehoshaphat found himself in. Undertaking these nationwide reform, getting the people back in line with God. And when the time came, when the time came, the man of God offered up worship. He said, set the priests and the worshipers in battle array. Let them lead and let them offer up worship and praise to Almighty God. The Bible said that at the sound of their voices and the instrument, he ambushed the enemy. He laid a trap for them right at the point of worship and praise to Almighty God. God laid the booby trap of confusion. Man couldn't distinguish who is who. Everybody become enemy and them just start chop from left to right. Edomites are chop Ammonites. And them chop till them. Listen to me, sorry for the part was sometime. Me a Jamaican, you understand? They slashed each other to death. God laid the booby trap of confusion. Listen to me. Your worship, when it comes from that deep wellspring of Laying down your life as a living sacrifice, spending time with God, ensuring that you are a temple that is a sweet smelling savor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At the flip of a switch, at the blink of an eye, when you activate the sounds of worship, God will lay traps for your enemy. Worship is the weapon that when we led, you don't have to fight. Why are you struggling? Why are you wrestling? Just get to the place where your life is a sweet smelling savior to the master. Where God is constantly smiling at you. Where his countenance is a lit. On you, listen to me. <laughs> when God's countenance is smiling at you, man and woman of God, tell the enemies beware. Tell them, watch out. You are dangerous. 
just by your very presence in the venue, in the vicinity, in the town, in the community, in the nation. Watch me. In 2 Corinthians 20, the Bible tells us that <laughs> God literally abused Israel's enemy. Abuse them. Them think they're not normal assault. You can imagine your own friend, your own confederate just start to slash at you. <laughs> Don't mess with a worshiper. Watch how you trifle with a worshiper. Watch how you're dealing with, God live, with God's living, breathing temples. We are dangerous. Watch how you watch how you approach me now. Back up off of me. I am a walking nuclear weapon. Hey. This action, this move came about because one king decided. I'm going to set my heart to seek the Lord. Tonight, I am calling God's people as I close this out to cleanse ourselves from every idol. Listen to me. If it not look like daddy, get rid of it. If it look like curse and evil covenant and even altar, mash it up. Take God's sledgehammer to it. Build your framework. Surround yourself with people who like-minded. Have them in your inner circle. Build the framework. Spend time and quality time with the Lord. Study his word. Dive deep. Then how are you going to worship if you don't know who you're worshiping? Jesus talked to the Samarian woman. He said the Jews know who we worship, but you know what they're not going with something, but I don't know what you call it. <laughs> hey, Roshake Neba. Come on, folks. Come on, elevation room. Stop going with something. And Prophet Bernard don't know what you call it. It looks like a worship. You know, borrowing from one of my Chinese, <laughs> and a, a Chinese lady that come to my building, the business place and say, coffee, worship, it look like a worship, but it ain't worship. Don't let me have to get Sandy here in you tonight. <laughs> Go, build the right framework, saints, so that when the worship come out, when it gush out, when it flow out, the fragrance fumigate your community, the fragrance fumigate your office. Some devil worshiper have a back up. Pastor Diana, when them are come to show them sprinkle and them derricks, when them hear you, they start to, oh, bless the Lord, oh, they have to back up. Because you built a framework that fosters a life, a temple that is constantly flowing with an adulterated, an adulterated praise and worship to Almighty God. Listen to the true prophetic voice and pray for your man of God. I want to pray for Bernard. I open another door. Prophet Bernard, Prophet Bernard, Prophet Bernard, but then I pray for him. Because we now have many true prophetic voices these days. Everybody, I tell everybody, say them I go over. Then if everybody I go over, then who I go go through? Somehow we have to go through. Oh Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every prophet I tell you, say, yeah, I go over. No, Bernard, they have to tell us that somebody is going to have to go through it because they have to squeeze out some idolatry. Hey, gosh, what a book. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have to get it squeezed out of you. It's rooted down deep. 
It a come from gingeration. No generation, this is so deep. You can't say generation, this is a gingeration. You have to squeeze it out of you. So you have to go through. Not over. You're not going to escape the process. You're not going to escape the process. Then if everybody are got over, then who are going to go under? Somebody have to carry some load to squeeze out some of these things out of you for God to get you to the place where you can effectively wield the weapon of worship. So pray for the man of God. He won't tell you what you, you want to hear, but what you need to hear, the true prophetic voice brings correction, rebuke, and turn the hearts of the people back to God. And lastly, get your heart right. Mashakondo. The, at the heart of the matter of worship is a matter of where your heart is. Wherever your heart is, go feed it and make sure it connects to the altar within in heaven so that your treasure right because anywhere your treasure is, at this where your heart is. You want to know where your heart is? Locate your treasure. And if your treasure ain't Jesus Christ, you're in trouble. If your treasure ain't Jesus Christ, you're in trouble. He must be your treasure, the one you long for, the one you desire. God bless you tonight. My prayer is that you will effectively wield the weapon of worship as it is restored to your life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Prophet Bernard, over to you, sir, once more in care of the blessed Holy Ghost. God bless you, saints.